So recently a friend inquired about a simple way to convert the videos that they've dumped from their digital camera to a DVD that could be played in a standard DVD player. Now, uh, anyone that works in digital video uh, might think that this is kind of a pedestrian request, but if you're an absolute novice, a lot of the software packages out there that allow you to do this, even the relatively low-end ones, can seem fairly daunting at first. So I'm going to do this brief tutorial that will show you a quick and easy way of converting those files and pressing a DVD for distribution. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. First, we need to download the application, so open a web browser and navigate to dvdflick.net. That's F L I C K. Once there, simply click on the download header. and then on the download button. Now this is a very simple and free tool that you can use to generate DVDs for your personal use. Okay, now that we've downloaded the file, let's double click that to install very simply click through, accept the agreement, accept the defaults for the installation location and program group. I choose not to create a desktop icon or associate it, but that is at your discretion. And now that it's installed, let's go ahead and run the program. When the program first launches, you will be presented with the new project window. Also, uh, you will notice on the left side this gray bar, which indicates the amount of free space on your DVD. So as you add videos and content, you will see uh, that begin to fill with yellow so that you have a quick overview of how much space you have remaining for your project. So the first thing we want to do is beginning adding our videos. So click Add Title and choose the video. Uh, in this case, I have a couple of videos here for this demonstration, so let's go ahead and double click Demo Video 1 to load it up. As you can see, our video has been added. Now uh, we can go over and edit the title. Uh, there are several options here, uh, but really for this point we're only worried about the title. Now if you'll be making a DVD with several videos, it's useful to make a menu. And this title is what this particular video clip will appear on the menu uh, as listed as. So let's change that to something descriptive. In this case I'm going to leave it as Demo Video 1. You'll also want to make sure the aspect ratio is correct. Here you can see that my video clip is in a widescreen letterbox format, so I will leave the default setting of widescreen. If, however, your video uh, takes up the entire square and is a full frame 4.3 video, then you would want to change this to normal. Also, you'll note the timeline uh, entry box here. Now this controls what thumbnail will appear on your menu. That is to say whatever time you place in this box, uh, that uh, time in the video is the image that will be displayed for the video on your menu. Here if I change it to 30 seconds, you will see this is the thumbnail that will appear on the menu. Uh, this you can ignore for now as it is an advanced feature that uh, will not be useful for us. In fact, uh, as we go through this video, uh, most of the defaults are fine for our purposes, so unless I specifically point out an option, it's probably best to leave the defaults. Moving on to chapters, if you are using a particularly long video, it's a good idea to place in some chapters, which will allow your viewer to navigate to specific portions of the video much more rapidly. As a general rule, I like to generate chapters for every five minutes of video. Now these other options, uh, again, are more advanced features that should not be necessary for our simple project, so we'll leave those as they are and continue. 
So at this point, we can add our second video title. Uh, this is, of course, optional if you only have one video you wish to add to your DVD. But in this case, we will be adding a second. Now, at this point, we could edit the video, but as I've already demonstrated that in video one, we'll forego that. Now, once you have all of your video titles added, you can then use the buttons on the side to reorder them and change the order in which they appear on the DVD. So, for example, we could then move video two up and video one would fall down or move it back. Once you have all of the videos uh, that you want in there and in the order which you prefer, we can then move on to the next step, which is project settings. Now these settings will control how the DVD itself behaves. The first option is the title, uh, which you can fill in is just basically a description of the project uh, to keep things simple. In this case, I will just title it test DVD. Now, here we have the uh, target size. Now most people will be using a standard 4.3 gig DVD, but if you have a particularly long DVD you're working on, you can change this to a uh, dual layer and use a dual layer disc, uh, but generally should not be necessary. Now these other options uh, you pretty much want to leave at their default values at this time. Moving on to video, we have some more options, most of which should be left at default. The exception might be encoding. Now, encoding refers to the quality at which the DVD uh, image is made. So, for instance, if you were to choose best, the uh, picture quality would be slightly better, but the time it takes to generate the disk uh, would be vastly increased. Contrawise, uh, choosing fastest will allow the DVD to be produced much more rapidly, uh, but the resulting image quality will be lacking. Uh, moving on, audio can be left alone. Uh, here you have options for playback. As I said, if you have several titles, uh, you can choose what happens after uh, the viewer finishes playing the current title. In this case, to play the next title in sequence, play the same title again, stop playing, or return to the menu. Uh, if you are not generating a menu, a lot of these options obviously are uh, superfluous, but uh, since we will be, I'll be choosing uh, return to the menu. Lastly, we have burning. This controls how your disk will be produced. Now, if the project you're working on is a one-off and you'll simply be making one, uh, then you may wish to choose to burn the project to disk directly. Uh, in this case, the program, once it has finished generating your DVD, will go ahead and burn it straight to an optical disk that you have loaded in your computer. Here you can change the volume label, choose the correct burner and its speed. Uh, you also have the option to eject the disk when it's done, verify that the disk was burned correctly and without errors, and of course to automatically erase uh, the disk if it is a re recordable disk that can be used multiple times. The alternative to this is to create an ISO image. An ISO image is a single file that contains all of the information needed to produce the DVD. Now this is useful if you think you will be burning several copies of this project, or if you think that there's a point in the future when you might want to make an additional copy. For the purposes of this tutorial, uh, an ISO is the uh, option we're going to go with. So once you have that checked, simply accept and we'll move to the next step. Now, if you do not wish to make a menu for your project, you can skip straight to the DVD creation, but in this case, we are going to make a menu to make it easier for our viewers to navigate. As you can see, the default option is none, or you have the option of several different menu themes. Uh, in this case, we'll be going with mosaic. Uh, you can leave uh, the additional options as they are and proceed. Now we can move on to actually creating the DVD. Now here you can see that the DVD is uh, being reformatted and encoded into a uh, format that's appropriate for consumer DVD players. Uh, now this could take a while. Depending on the length of the video or quantity of videos in your project, this can take anywhere from several minutes uh, to several hours. So this is a good opportunity to stretch your legs and uh, perhaps get a cup of tea and we'll be back when this is complete. 
Now our project is uh, nearly complete. And there it is. So now that the disk has been generated, if you'll look here at the bottom, you can see that it places our resulting files in the documents folder under a folder called DVD. So if we open up a copy of Windows Explorer and navigate to that folder, you will see the various text files and XML files used to generate the disk. And here at the top is our ISO file. I'll go ahead and uh, play that so you can see how it looks. Here we have our menu. We can navigate to our title selection and choose what to play. And as you can see, the video plays quite well in its letterbox format. So now we can burn this to our actual physical DVD. If you're using a modern version of Windows that is any variant of Windows Vista or Windows 7, you can simply right click on this file navigate to open with and use the Windows disk image. Now simply insert your blank disk and press burn and when that ejects you have a complete DVD which as I said should be suitable for set-top box DVD players and uh, compatible computers alike. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them uh, below and until then we will see you next time.